six. Just pre that one in. <clears throat> Not that. Let's start with pursed lip breathing. Welcome. 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 
Do you want to be less stressed? You came to the right place. First relax. 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 First relax. Relax. First relax. Relax. First relax. 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 Relax your neck and shoulders. Keeping your now now lie down in your own time. One, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and repeat. Now lie down in your own time. Now lie down in your own time. Do you feel connected to the ground? Do you feel connected to the ground? Do you feel connected to the ground? Do you try not to fall asleep but just linger in a state of
mind that. Oh. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. You are very uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. And me. Ow. Deep. Down. There are deep over there. Deep down. Deep, 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 deep down. Deep. You? You? Yeah. 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 I just get the word out. If I... If I can't get what I am saying, but I know what I can get to. So... So... Let's all go and get what we can do. Fortune from Slokar. Ah, uh, yes. It looks like today must be your lucky day. For I see relaxation in your future. Have no worries about your troubles, my friend. Zoltar has wisdom enough to conquer them all. Surrender to me your treasure, and let me tell you more. Hear your fortune from Zoltar. Ah, uh, yes. It looks like today must be your lucky day. For I see relaxation in your future. Have no worries about your troubles, my friend. Zotar has wisdom enough to conquer them all. Surrender to me your treasure, and let me tell you more. How do you transfer? Yeah, well, well. How do you transfer? How do you transfer? Um, How do you transfer? Um, uh, How do you transfer? How do you transfer? Well, I knew you could get that. How do you transfer? How do you transfer? Well, um, the book. How do you transfer? How do you transfer? Well, um, how do you transfer? 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 Yeah. We're out. How do you transfer? We're, 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 we're How, do you transfer? Um, How do you transfer? 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 What is your weight? What is your weight? Uh, well, can you um, pick up this glass? Can you pick up this glass? Can um, you balance I, this upside down? It, it, upside down. Transfer. I I stop arguing. Transfer. Can you d um, what does it look like when you stand? You stop, when you, you stand? Stop. How long until you fall over again? I, I, Do you drink I, too much? Can you balance um, this upside um, down? I, um, I really do need to see if you are going to fall over. Can you demonstrate this? I really do need to see if you are going to fall over. Do you drink too much? 
You drink too much. You drink too much. You drink too much. Do you really think these terrible things would happen to you if you were left alone? It's not really likely, is it? I'm Jem. I'm here to support Hugh in all of his crazy ideas, and this is just one of them. Hi, I'm Steve. Um, I'm, uh, I've been kind of live scoring what's been happening in the squeeze box space with um, various sounds and loops and so on and so forth. Hello. Hi, I'm Tim, and I've been playing with these videos. <laughs> and collaborating and trying to build a video instrument that intersects with um, Hugh and intersects with Steve in interesting ways. Hi, I'm Kat. I've been working on the project in a creative production and critical friend capacity. Hello, um, I'm Sam. I've been working on the project as as, a, as an outside eye and drama. So. <laughs> It's loosely based on the assessment process for care packages, um, as hopefully you will get the picture of. Yeah, we had plenty of space to uh, project all around the court, which was an amazing opportunity. Um, we um, did a bit of that with the band 
Oli Mahtu to get over that to the arms. And then you found a phantom by the living mirror. What else can we get within the living mirror? It's actually not, not too far from the actual manor house, but um, very, very hidden away. And the, the buyer of the internet. But either in this bar, you've got a war in the team that you've got to do. Do 
It just seems you are going to fall over. Do it just seems you are going to fall over. Do it just seems you are going to fall over. Do you are going to fall over. Do it just seems you are going to fall over. Do it just seems you are going to fall over. Do are you okay? It just seems you are. Are you all right, you? talk a little bit to let you get your breath back for a second before I ask you the first question. So um, hi everyone, uh, we thought it would be nicer to, um, as well as sharing some of the content for Squeezebox, we, we wanted to also talk a little bit about um, our process as well. So each of us has prepared a response to a question to dig a little deeper into our role um, or to provide some insight into our perspectives on the work. So I'm gonna start with you uh, again, uh, as he's the lead artist on the project. And Hugh, I want you to tell us something about the relationship between performing in Squeezebox as a character or a persona and how you use your body and your voice as a narrator to the content and how you provide social commentary on the issues that the piece is exploring. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, again, I um, start that um we we just come and perform our work, yeah, a bit locked out about <laughs> the um and um how um we were in the face and she gave me a mic. There was just girl on the on the projector that and um I thought I just I nervous and uh, Speak my mind reaction to what I was watching. Steve gave me a microphone and then I took um I took talked about what I was watching and then um um got into really cool um space where I was 
I was commenting on my own life, but but I was the body in space uh, artist. So I think I'm pretty like before that and it's a bit um um I think that some of the content is really difficult and uh, quite today and quite uh, unbearable at times. But I think maybe in the States it allows, maybe it allows all different ways to be in there. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just about me to be re, finding the end of the program. And I'm playing with a lot of artists. And although I'm, although I'm responding to kind of negative things about <clears throat> disability, I feel bad and not, not embarrassed in that, in that space. Yeah. Thanks very much, Hugh. So, Steve, your question, question for you is around your approach to improvisation in this squeeze box space. And um, having watched and listened to you at work, you use a combination of traditional instruments, found objects, recorded samples, digital tools in the creation of the sonic environment. Can you talk a bit about your approach to that improvisation, how much you bring with you into the space, what toolkit you pack before you arrive? and how you're influenced in the live space through the actions of your collaborators. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the really interesting thing about this was, like you mentioned about what, what you bring to the space or what you pack as part of your, you know, going to work sort of box or what have you. Um, and that was informed always by the last session. So I think really earlier on we were talking about uh, things that destroy paper, like um, we used a neutral bullet and a shredder, hole puncher, that kind of stuff. Um, so then I would experiment at home with looping that stuff. And so that informs all, all that kind of thematic stuff, um, totally informs what, what gets brought to it. Um, and on improvisation, yeah, it's been really nice to work with, you know, these guys who are really good at improvisation, I think. And you know, and that, like that kind of gives you the courage to go there, and also you have a kind of certain level of trust, as well, which is really helpful. Um, so yeah, uh, you, you're throwing a lot at the wall uh, in an improvisation at any one time, and not all of it is going to stick, and some of it, you know, could have really you know strange optics as well. So you kind of reflect afterwards, and it's been really good to have that that time to speak with uh, you and the other artists about like what did that moment mean? I think there was a there was a moment where I went up the ladder and it was just really bizarre, you know, and it's it's like in the moment you don't really get a chance to reflect. You're just kind of trying stuff out and it's nice to have that. And it's nice to have, nice to have the opportunity to do stuff that doesn't work as well as stuff that does land. But yeah, very guided by um, the themes and also Hugh's writing as well and really exciting to work with these guys in a really, what, what feels like a really musical way, almost like we're a band and... Uh, and that's really nice as well. Great, yeah, absolutely. Um, when you're talking about um, uh, things that destroy paper, mm. the part of the reason for doing that was around like the amount of paperwork that gets generated around care assessments. And mm. uh, so we talked a lot about stacks of paper and filing and shredding things. And mm. yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, Steve. Um, Thank Tim question for you that's in the same vein around improvisation so Steve talked about the instruments he brings into the space as a projection artist and a VJ you similarly developed a range of tools to play with in the live space can you tell us about the process of developing that visual material and the relationship between the content and how you manipulated it on the day yeah sure I mean uh, first of all it was a huge pleasure and honor to be invited to get involved in this project because um, it's not often you're just given full free reign on something. So, as you know, as in, in like Steve just said, joining a band, it really felt kind of like that. The first time we all got together and started playing, it was like, ah, yeah. Last time I did this, I think I was 18, <laughs> in a band playing bass guitar, and it was really, really good fun. Um, so it certainly had that vibe. Um, and in in terms of building a an instrument to play, which is based on video, um, 
that was a really exciting process. We started by looking, obviously, at the themes and looking at some of the material that um, Hugh had already recorded um, and snipping it up and turning it into loops and into little chunks of video. And we, I, I wanted to create a way to be able to play those like notes or like chords or like little, you know, rhyming couplets or whatever you will. Um, so um, I developed a, a system which we use a lot um, in the sort of video work we do on a um, on a regular basis, and it was really good fun to sort of let loose with it because quite a lot of the time we're doing things that are a bit more structured and rigid and don't aren't really there for you to play. So it's it's been a huge amount of fun building that tool and playing it. So I've got a like MIDI controller here and another laptop here and lots of stuff to play with. Uh, we we spent a day at South. Um, South Devon College um, myself, Hugh, Jen and a couple of people from the college helped us um, do a green screen shoot so a lot of the material that we generated on that day we then so after we'd spent a time sort of developing ideas around the themes um, we spent this day shooting a whole bunch of really specific moments and scenes and then we spent a lot of time cutting all of that out and putting it together uh, which is a huge amount of fun you know having that time to be able to go and actually create stuff specifically for the um, for the piece um so yeah as steve said throwing a lot at the wall like quite literally <laughs> from my point of view um it's it's been a huge amount of fun to be let loose and to be a part of a, a band and in terms of working collaboratively collaboratively i think in terms of direction for what we're all doing or certainly for myself anyway it's been very much about playing something in the moment as it happens with a bunch of material you've got to play it there's themes and sections which we go through and we have a loose kind of like a jazz standard. Um, but then we kind of go off on on solos or whatever within that. Uh, there's no one there to clap after the solos yet, though. <laughs> so we need, we need an audience, a bigger audience for the next one. Um, so, yeah, huge amount of fun. It's been great so far. Thanks, Tim. Jen, question for you. Jen's, Jen's hidden off camera. <laughs> But she's there. Um, so in, in his introduction, he referred to this R&D being loosely based on the assessment that someone in receipt of a care package goes through. And some of the performed content and the intensity of images and sound can be quite dark and sometimes shocking. Can you talk a bit about how the lived experience of social worker assessment is reflected in the work? Your view on that? Uh, yeah, the um, I think the emotions portrayed during the piece don't actually quite hit the horrendous reality of a true care assessment as we experienced it. The gruelling and arduous assessment process, or as, as I think of it, an interrogation, took us really on a roller coaster of pain, disbelief, numbness, anger, excruciating and agonising anguish and incredulity. Um, much of the work within the piece is an abstract way to show this, but also much of it way, way too much of it was and is all too real. Um, using actual words and actual questions that Hugh's been subjected to, and I would say probably will be again. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. Sam. You brought a wealth of experience to the process of, as an actor, director, practitioner and writer and the insight that brings to the writing and devising of original work. Um, you came into the process an outside eye and critical friend and you've worked with Hugh before. How has working uh, as an outside eye on Squeezebox differed to your previous projects and your experiences of devising original work? Yeah, um, I'm going to give this a go with my camera off, Kat, to let me know if you can't hear me. Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, as you said, I've worked before with with you um, on you, me and my voice. And that that was a slightly different process to this um, because we, we were working with a, a script. Um, and, uh, and and I think that's true of, of the outside eye work. Um, I do generally speaking like this, you know, it's, it's with script or, or text or something that's already made. The interesting thing about this process is I was coming in as an outsider. Um, it was a, a real privilege, actually, sort of being in the room 
when these guys were playing and met, being able to feed in on that um, as well as as well as the thing that they eventually ended up with I think I was as always really conscious of um, bringing you know opinions and, and thoughts to the process which open up conversations and possibilities in a helpful way and not in a way that corrupts. yeah we've missed we've lost the, you there Sam. yeah your sounds pretty um uh cutting uh, in and out <laughs> i oh think there's no. a bit of a delay as well but um, so well, what you were saying was about supporting the process in a way that, um, yeah, the, the comments that you're making is supporting the process rather than disrupting it. Yeah. Can you can you hear me again? Shall I try yeah. and round it off? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think that's particularly important given that I was coming into the room when these guys were playing. Um, they were making right there and then and then the th Thing hadn't been made and I think think point is is helpful and considered and conscious of I think um uh but but yeah overall I think it was about relating what what we were doing in the room back to those sort of really concrete aims and themes you had articulated at the beginning of the process I think the thing with play like the magic of it is it it takes on a life of its own right, right? and it And, and and it can it can really um and run and run with it was was maybe just asking questions which which brought us back to those original more concrete aims and themes did you get all that cat i think we we could we could piece it together sam <laughs> thanks for persevering um, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> shall I shall I pick up from there Hugh about because I think that what I was going to say kind of does follow on from um what Sam was talking yeah, about yeah. um so I think I had a similar role in terms of the, what a creative producer was on this project um I mean there's lots of debate about what a creative producer is <laughs> but for me it's like someone who can support a project from its inception to completion. And I think I had a similar role to what Sam was describing there, which is kind of really getting under the skin of the, um, the project in its early stages when, um, when Hugh had written his um, application for funding um, and, and the, the context that brought everyone together into this space and the things that he wanted to say. Um, so for me, that was a, it was about supporting the scaffolding to enable the R&D to grow because you don't want to restrict the creative process. You want to enable it to the project to spin out, but you want it to spin out in such a way that it still feels familiar to the original aims of the project. So we asked lots of questions um, and we would reg regularly discuss the literal and metaphorical ways that we could um, express Hugh's experiences of the care, care support process, like the, um, the assessment process. And, but at the same time, imagining how an audience would respond to that content, some of it being dark and some of it being quite challenging um, and, and trying to explore how we might feel as an audience receiving it, how you are feeling as an audience receiving this work and a way of doing that um, so that it would enable conversations or, um, uh, and eliciting empathy rather than sympathy. Um, and what somebody might take away from the experience of watching a, a, an installation or a performance or a durational um, projection piece um, once they'd seen it um, and to attempt to open up conversations about diversity in our society around contextualizing disability as a positive identity and about all of our roles in ableism. So some pretty big topics. I think most artists are trying to change the world and we're trying to change the world through trying to find a sense of shared experience, um, as well as um, the autobiographical content that Hugh is bringing to the work, uh, which is why the, the piece kind of focuses around this cent central 
column of breathing and a shared breath and um and spins out and spins back into those those things so enough enough conversation i think for now um i think we'll wrap, wrap that bit up and um and move into another uh improvisation to close close this session um we hope that you'll enter into some discussion with us after that improvisation to um to see how we did <laughs> in terms of sharing this content with you and how you're feeling about it and where you think the might work might go next so i will switch my mic and camera off and hand over to our performers again
Thank mm-hmm. you. 